How's it going, everyone? If you've been following this channel, you know I've been a little bit of a broken record. Look, I'm excited for 2024. I feel like there aren't a lot of people that are as excited as I am about 2024 and gaming. Maybe it's just because I'm so hyper-focused on this quarter one that I just think is insane. And obviously, Japanese RPGs are one of my favorite genre. It is probably my favorite genre in all of gaming. So when I see the lineup for Q1... It does my heart joy. We'll see how the rest of the year pans out. There are some things I'm, you know, a little bit skeptical about for the latter portion of the year, but we'll get to that when we get to it. In this video, I want to highlight all of the big upcoming PS4 and PS5 RPGs that are coming out in Q1. Now, Q1 runs until March 31st. And this includes both Japanese RPGs and Western RPGs. However, you guys are going to notice predominantly a JRPG list. It's not that I'm not into Western RPGs. I love Western RPGs. However, there's only a few of them coming out. Now, before we get into this video, I just want to ask you guys, please like this video and do leave a comment with your thoughts. It really does help out the channel a lot and it is much appreciated. Without further ado, let's get right into it and let's start off with Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. So excited for this and so happy for RGG as a studio to get a lot more recognition in the gaming world. They've been around for a long time, but Yakuza as a franchise, if you remember in the PS2 days and the PS3 days, Yakuza would come out every now and again and then the franchise would just be MIA for a while. We'd have these delayed releases over here stateside. That's a thing of the past, guys. These days, we get RGG titles day and day uh, over in Japan as well. They're adding English voice acting, which I know some people think is a blasphemy for a game like this. However... I do offer you the fact they want this game to be accessible to a larger audience, and that's how you do it. With Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, obviously, if you're gonna be getting this game, please go play the other games. Maybe it's a stretch to say go play all of these games, but at the very least, Yakuza 0, Yakuza Kiwami, and Kiwami 2, and Yakuza Like a Dragon. I think all four of those games must be played before uh, you play Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. I think most people would agree you should probably play uh, Yakuza 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then also Like a Dragon, the man who erased his name. It's a daunting process to get into these games, but Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth looks like a massive, massive experience. Obviously, featuring both Kazuma Kiryu, the longtime protagonist of these Yakuza games and Ichiban Kasuga, they're brought together by the hand of fate or perhaps something more sinister. Live it up in Japan and explore all that Hawaii has to offer in an RPG adventure so big it spans the Pacific. Expect a ton of content and epic emotional drama to larger than life heroes. Experience one of a kind combat with dynamic fast paced RPG battles where the battlefield becomes your uh, weapon and anything goes. Infinite adventure, live it up in Japan and explore all that Hawaii has. An adventure so big, unforgettable moments await at every step of the journey with a mix of quests and activities to enjoy at your leisure. Look, the $70 price tag is something that I've been critical of in the sense that not all games can get away with it. Given the amount of content Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is going to have, I think it's going to be worthwhile for that $70 Like a Dragon Infinite Infinite Wealth officially out on January 26th. Next up, we have a new IP from Don't Nod Entertainment, the guys that brought you the Life is Strange titles. They also did Vampire. Game looks really good. Going a little bit under the radar, we have Banisher's Ghost of New Eden. Hunt Ghost has two memorable characters in a story-driven action RPG where your decisions have dramatic consequences. Solve haunting cases and battle supernatural forces, combining anti-spiritual powers and Red's arsenal. This is a game that was supposed to come out in 2023, and they ultimately decided to delay the game based on the fact that they thought there was too many games coming out and this one was going to get lost in the shuffle. Dare I say, February is even worse in terms of when this game is coming out in terms of getting lost in the shuffle, but I'm hoping the game still gets a little bit of an audience. It will be priced at $59.99. Immerse yourself in a beautiful, intimate, and powerful story between two faded lovers as banishers enter the lives of New Eden's communities and solve haunting cases in a mystical, lore-rich world plagued with supernatural creatures and ancient secrets. Use your wits or combine the spiritual powers and Red's arsenal to defeat and banish souls tormenting the living. The game notes play as both of the characters and battle supernatural forces with magic weapons and supernatural powers. 
and spiritual powers, unlock new gear and abilities to unleash the full power of the Banishers, uncover the ancient secrets and hidden mysteries of a mystical, lore-rich world and characteristic of renowned studio Don't Nod make meaningful and morally ambiguous choices that affect the story, the world, and the fate of all characters dead or alive. Hoping this game gets a little bit of attention as we get closer to its release, Banishers Ghosts of New Eden is out on February the 13th. Next up, quite possibly the biggest RPG release this quarter and quite possibly the entire year. For a lot of people, the most anticipated game of the year, we have the second part in the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, a timed PlayStation 5 exclusive, no PlayStation 4 release for FF7 Rebirth. It's the highly anticipated new story in the Final Fantasy VII Remake Project, a reimagining of the iconic original game into three standalone titles. Now, if you haven't played FF7 Remake, obviously go play that. Rebirth is going to be where the 7 Remake Trilogy really starts to take shape, given that now you're going to have this massive world to explore. You're going to get into, really, the heart of Final Fantasy 7 story. Based on what we've heard thus far, this is going to capture one of the crucial elements and crucial narrative arcs of FF7's entire story. It's going to be a whirlwind, and obviously, uh, there are some twists and turns. I mean, the promotional material and the end of FF7 Remake really lends it to being a little bit different from FF7 to say the least. The game's gonna have an expansive world as the party searches for Sephiroth, you'll explore the beautiful expansive regions of the world and open up new areas to discover. Dig deeper into the world of Final Fantasy VII with rewarding side content and mini games, plus various unique forms of transportation to navigate the world. An evolved battle system as well combines strategic thinking with thrilling action combat alongside your comrades, including newly added characters, deepen their relationships to unleash powerful team-based combos, and beyond the walls of fate in the standalone adventure for fans and newcomers cloud and his comrades venture across the planet their fates unwritten making each step outside the dystopian city of midgar fresh and mysterious now they are saying you can jump into this game without playing the ff7 remake guys please go play the ff7 remake i don't care what they're saying I need you guys to play the 7 Remake. It's a fantastic game, and that game will get you excited for Rebirth. Expect Rebirth to be an evolution of Part 1, and really, I expect it to be a much more expansive experience. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is out February 29th exclusively for the PlayStation 5, at least initially. Ultimately, I do see it hitting PC, maybe Switch 2, maybe Xbox at some point, who knows? Next up, we have a PlayStation 5 exclusive coming from the talented devs over at Team Ninja. We have Rise of the Ronin. Dropping on March 22nd, Rise of the Ronin has you embark on an epic journey across the war-torn 19th century Japan in a combat-focused open-world action RPG from Team Ninja, the veteran studio behind Neo and Ninja Gaiden. Now, they are aiming for Rise of the Ronin to be a bit more of an accessible game comparatively to Neo. The game is going to feature difficulty options, so they'll have a story-based mode, an intermediate mode, and a more difficult mode mode for those of you that still want that challenge of, let's say, a Neo. Japan, 1863. After three centuries of the Shogun's oppressive rule, the black ships of the West descend upon the nation's borders and the country falls into a state of turmoil. Amidst the chaos of war, disease, and political unrest, a nameless warrior forges their own path, holding the very fate of Japan in their hands. Rise of the Ronin's key features note, shape a dynamic story. As a masterless samurai, a Ronin, your destiny is your own. See the story unfold in different ways depending on the choices you make and the characters you ally with along the way. Face critical mission decisions like whether to assassinate or protect key figures and shape the course of history through a rich multi-choice system. Explore an authentic world. The Bakumatsu period heralds the end of the Shogun's rule as a new era begins and the East and West collide. Experience this cultural revolution across an open world where you'll meet the key figures who'll shape the course of history and the ordinary citizens seeking a guiding light in the darkness and engage in deep but accessible combat from the veteran developers of Neo and Ninja God and Rise of the Ronin offers deeply engaging yet accessible combat with layers of complexity suitable for any playstyle. Face your foes with a selection of close quarter weaponry or engage from afar with authentic period firearms. Remember, you have a variety of game modes and Rise of the Ronin will be dropping on March 22nd. Interesting release date. And we'll get to that later on why March 22nd is important. I'm sure most of you already know. Next up, another JRPG coming from the incredibly talented studio in Vanillaware, the developers of Muramasa the Demon's Blade. 
play 13 Sentinel Aegis Rim, and of course, Odin's Fear Left Tracer. Unicorn Overlord is their latest title, and it has you liberate your kingdom and reclaim your destiny. A tactical fantasy RPG, fight against the fate, and embark on a royal adventure to regain your reign alongside trustworthy allies. Unicorn Overlord combines the timeless tactical RPG genre with overworld exploration and innovative battle system, and it truly wouldn't be a vanillaware game if you didn't have that slick presentation, the awesome art style. You'll traverse a vibrant world, assemble units, and direct them into exquisitely animated battles, perform heroic deeds, and grow renowned throughout the Five Nations. Cultivate a grand army with over 60 unique characters, from humans and elves to massive beasts and heavenly angels. Unicorn Overlord is due out on March 8th. Next up, we have a pair of titles that I do want to run down quickly. The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 and 4 will be seeing their PlayStation 5 release. Now, I've talked about Legend of Heroes ad nauseum on this channel. It's one of my favorite JRPG franchises. Honestly speaking, at this point, it might be my favorite JRPG series just because nobody does world building like Legend of Heroes. And, uh, you know, when you've got as many games as Legend of Heroes does, that's kind of necessary given that, yo, if you really want to know the entire story, you got to play the Legend of Heroes Sky Trilogy. Then you got to play the Crossbell Arc. Then you got to play the four Cold Steel games. And then we have Trails into Reverie. And guess what? That's not all. There are more games coming out, and I believe at this point we're at around the halfway point of the entire story. Yeah, pack a lunch if you want to get into Legend of Heroes. It's daunting, and you want to say that RGG games are daunting to get into? Yo, Legend of Heroes is one of the more daunting franchises to get into. It's absolutely worthwhile, um, and I think you can jump into Cold Steel and play the, those four games, but a lot of people will have my head for that opinion. Most people think that you need to go through the Sky Trilogy, then you need to do the Crossbow Arc, and then Cold Steel, and play the games entirely sequentially. Um, the thing is, with the Sky Trilogy and the Crossbow Arc, those games are a little bit dated, being designed for the PSP, so keep that in mind. But uh, Cold Steel 1 through 4, I'm not saying they're blow away technically, but they look fairly decent. Um, obviously, do not be playing Cold Steel 3 and 4 without playing Cold Steel 1 and 2. But uh, I digress, Legend of Heroes is awesome, and y'all should get into it if you haven't. Next up, we have the Legend of Legacy HD Remastered, a 3DS JRPG. Coming back now on modern platforms, RPG fans rejoice as the classic fantasy of Legend of Legacy is remastered in HD and now debuting on modern platforms. Many have come seeking riches, glory, and legendary treasure, but in the end, they all vanish, swallowed up by darkness. None have seen into the heart of this island, now awakened from its eternal summer, the mythical island known as Avalon. HD remastered much better visuals explore a world map uh, bursting with storybook charm when characters move the surrounding terrain springs to life like a pop-up picture book grow your adventure with each step and you take and discover more of the map as your character moves the map will be drawn and filled in legend of legacy features seven main characters and limitless adventures and an intuitive battle system as well Expect a quality soundtrack on top of that. The Legend of Legacy drops on March 22nd. Next up, enormous release. One of the biggest remakes in quite a while. We have Persona 3 Reload. Persona 3 is the game that really popularized Persona as a franchise. For a lot of people, Persona's kind of got that Fallout thing going on where Persona 3 is where the franchise starts for so many. And this is a ground-up remake. Yeah, we got Persona 3 Portable finally ported to modern platforms. But this is the game that most of us wanted. And why I had spec that Persona 3 FES was not ported to modern platforms because they were doing a full-on remake. Dive into the dark hour and awaken the depths of your heart. Persona 3 Reload is a captivating reimagining of the genre-defining RPG reborn for the modern era with cutting-edge graphics and gameplay. Experience the pivotal game of the Persona series faithfully remade with cutting-edge graphics, modernized quality of life features, and signature stylish UI. Fully immerse yourself in an emotional, gripping journey with new scenes, character interactions, and additional voiceover. Choose how to meaningfully spend each day through various activities from exploring the port island to forging genuine bonds with beloved characters and build and command your optimal team to take down otherworldly shadows and climb closer to the truth. It is a $70 release, which I know some people are going to be critical of. It is going to be on Xbox Game Pass on PC and Xbox. Given the amount of content you're going to get out of Persona 3 Reload and it's going to be an expansive game that most of you are going to play for 80 plus hours, is $70 the biggest deal in the world? I personally don't think so. I think the bigger deal is Sega. What are you doing here? Releasing Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and Persona 3 Reload back to back? It's going to be a pretty hectic uh, week that week. And uh, speaking of that hectic week... Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is also dropping that week on February the 1st, but if you buy it digitally, you got to play it on January 29th. A grand adventure in the skies awaits. 
Form a party of four from a diverse roster of Skyfarers and slash or shoot or hex your way to victory against treacherous foes in an action RPG, take on quest solo, or with the help of others in up to four player cooperative play. Now we know that the main story is going to span around 20 to 30 hours. There's going to be post game content and there's going to be a, a lot of side content given that co-op is an aspect of the game as well. Expect it to be super replayable. Engage in real time combat with a party of four in a character action RPG. Choose from a diverse roster of Skyfarers, each with their own unique weapon skills and combat styles. Teamwork makes the dream work with party based mechanics such as link attacks and chain bursts to help you crush foes in spectacular fashion, tackle quests solo or with the help of others for up to four player cooperative play. Awesome art style and a long time coming for the release of Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. We've been following this game for like seven years now. Initially, the development started with Platinum Games at, on board as well. Then it shifted on over to Psy Games entirely. Looks like it turned out really well. There's a real chance for Grand Blue to reach the next level over here stateside. I know that Grand Blue Versus has been pretty popular, but Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, this big budget JRPG, fingers crossed it turns out well. What is a bit of a harrowing thought is the idea of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and Persona 3 Reload all coming out in the span of seven days. Two of those titles being published by Sega, kind of competing with yourself, but these games gotta come out when they gotta come out, and uh, it's gonna be a fun time, to say the least. Next up, we have King Arthur, Knight's Tale. This initially dropped on PC back in April of 2022, a unique hybrid between turn-based tactical games and traditional character-centric RPGs. Knight's Tale is a modern retelling of a classic Arthurian mythology story filled with, through the dark fantasy uh, tropes, a twist on the traditional tales of chivalry. The game's had a pretty positive reception, all things considered, an 8 out of 10 from IGN, and generally speaking, a pretty good reception. Now, this is the kind of game that does align more so with a PC audience, but hopefully it is received well on console as well. King Arthur Knight's Tale drops on February 22nd. And lastly, this list would not be complete with one of the biggest game releases of the year, Dragon's Dogma 2, a decade in the making, a decade plus in the making. Dragon's Dogma initially came out in early 2012 after a decade of people clamoring for a sequel, people being invested into the original game and the original game developing into this cult classic. We finally have a follow-up from one of the most consistent publishers in the game today in Capcom. Think about this, in a 12-month period, Capcom, going back to 2023, would have put out Resident Evil 4 Remake, Street Fighter 6, capped off that year with Dragon's Dogma 2. What a calendar year it has been for Capcom, and Dragon's Dogma 2 looks to cap it off in a big way. A single-player, narrative-driven action RPG that challenges the players to choose their own experience from the appearance of their arisen, their vocation, their party, how to approach different situations and more. A truly immersive fantasy world. Expect a sizable world to explore with a lot of content, challenging gameplay, and an immersive world as well, where you will have party members, especially your pawn, who will always company your arisen and enter a covenant with up to two additional pawns as well you'll have a party by your side facing the monstrosities in the world beyond the town borders you'll encounter diverse monsters that inhabit the lands you'll need to decide between engaging in battles or finding alternatives so be aware of your party setup the terrain around you and the monsters you face inhabitants of this world you've got travelers merchants soldiers and other folk to go about their daily lives preoccupied by their own objectives and motives they all exhibit different emotions and at times they may lead you to a quest by approaching you and asking for a favor. This has been a long time coming. I'm excited that Dragon's Dogma 2 will finally be here. It is out on March 22nd exclusively for next generation platforms. But that is going to do it for me. What a lineup we have in Q1. And this is just the RPGs. We're not mentioning stuff like Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League. We're not mentioning stuff like Skull and Bones, etc, etc. There's so many games. Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. There are so many titles coming out in the first quarter that I really feel like this is one of the greatest quarters in gaming history. And maybe that's a little bit of a hyper Hyperbolic statement, we ultimately have to see how these games turn out, but in terms of the slate of titles, one of the most compelling periods, especially for RPG and more so JRPG fans across the board. That's gonna do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.